Hello and welcome to Star Trek. I'm Rohit Khilnani. This is the third time we are featuring Vidya Balan because she keeps doing so many films, so we'll keep <laughs> featuring you on the show. You're the only one saying I do lots of films. Everyone says, you do one or two films a year? <laughs> this is this is the third time before yeah, the next release. That's Correct. true. That's Correct. true. Correct. So coming to your latest release, Bobby Jasus, my I want to ask you first, what is your first memory of a detective serial or a film? Karam Chandya. I remember yeah. growing up, uh, there used to be one or two shows on TV and uh, we were allowed to watch Karam Chand. Right. And uh, Karam Chand with his glasses and eating the gajar <laughs> <laughs> and saying, shut up kitty, yeah. had, um, you know, consumed hmm. our imagination. So I think that's the first association, right. our first memory of a detective. Right. So uh, is, uh, is Bobby Jasus like Karam Chand or is like Sherlock Holmes or is... Not close to any of them okay. but not far enough because at the end of the day Bobby Jasus is a Jasus, a detective. But the interesting thing is that um, this is not just um, the story of a detective or, or it's not just a detective story. It's right. also the story of a girl, a girl from uh, a small modest neighborhood in Hyderabad. A girl who has aspirations to become the best Jasus in her mohalla. Okay. You know, so there's a certain simplicity of aspiration there. Right. And uh, she's at a marriageable age and there's pressure from her family to get married. But she's, she's wanting to do this, something unusual. She's hoping to get that one big case. She's sort of amateur. She's not a trained Jasus. Right. So that's what sets her apart from the other Jasuses or detectives whose names you've taken yeah. because she's not she does not know it all it's just that oh, she's, she's street smart she she's got the presence one, of yeah. mind she wants to be one so oftentimes it's uh, y you know uh, it's probably her luck <laughs> that gets her ahead and uh, that's what endears her to you her yeah. guess is as good as yours right. but at the same time she is <laughs> you know, alert and she's, um, she's, she thinks, um, she thinks ahead of everyone else. Right. That's what also makes her a Jasus and g gives her that big case which she cracks and, sure. you know, that catapults her into big league right. <laughs> or big fame within her mohalla. But there is a certain innate simplicity and she's a, She's a child, you know, she's a child who grows up during the course of the film. One of those fascinations that everyone at some stage wants to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. She's, she's just, uh, um, but she's probably grown up and right. not, <laughs> Still you know, yeah, yeah. And not been able to shed that right. fascination. She's made it her life mission, so to speak. And right. she's very spirited. She's fun. She's, um, you know, there's also an entire family angle to the story. So it's a. It's basically a fun family film. Make that out from the promos that you know you want to be a detective and your family is completely against it. Yeah. Then what happens? How do you get into these six different avatars? Not, you know, there are uh, six here. Eight. No, that's the main Bobby look. Okay, that's the main Bobby. Yeah, okay. but um, I actually get into twelve <coughs> disguises. <laughs> I guess as a Jasus. Right. What's also interesting is that she goes into a dress sala dukan and she says, you know, okay, give me this. Uh, she things on her feet. Right. So whatever she feels is probably apt when she has to go into places where she may be recognized and may not be welcome. She gets into a disguise which you know a lot of uh, detectives do. So that adds a certain fun right, element right. to it. She has a tolly which is only a boy's because she's more like a gundi you know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, d despite the opposition at home her mother is very indulgent hmm. and uh, her sister is also strangely supportive. Right. Um, her inspiration is really her aunt being played by Tanvi Azmi because Tanvi Azmi is a matchmaker. She's, she's, all this started because Tanvi Azmi used to send her off on, <laughs> you know, small errands saying, find out does this boy really live here, okay. you know, who all are in his family. Sort that's of background where, check, that's how she started. That's where the seed is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are many avatars here. I, I saw some interviews of yours where, you know, when you were dressed as a beggar, there was an incident. Do yeah, you tell yeah, us yeah. that? You know, uh, th that was my first shot right. on the first day of our shoot in Hyderabad. Where, where Hyderabad? Okay. In Hyderabad, outside Nampali station. Okay. I was dressed as a beggar and an assistant director was dressed in a burqa. Both of us walked up to real beggars 
and uh, we went and sat next to them and those beggars got upset because they so have... these are real locations, not a set? Or no, no, not a set. There was a camera and a car on the opposite side of the street, so it was a sort of guerrilla shoot. And uh, when we walked up to there, those beggars got upset because they said, you know, this is our area, how can you be coming here? And then we had to explain to them that, listen, there's a shoot happening. We don't want the money. If we make any money, we'll give it to you and go. And uh, so I just kept, you know, kept saying Allah ke naam pe de de baba, um, right. you know, all, all sorts of things. And I tugged at one woman's hand and she was in a rush because I guess anyone going or coming out of a station is right. in a rush. So she got so irritated. She turned to me and she said, you look completely able-bodied. You know, kaam kyu nahi kar sakte? Bhi kyu mang rahe ho? <laughs> and, and she just walked away and my face yeah. fell. So Summer on the walk, he said, what happened? What happened with Is everything okay? Yeah. And then I heard his voice, I started giggling because <laughs> I realized that was the biggest yes. compliment. She yes. hadn't recognized me. Neither had the beggars I was sitting with. Right. When I was leaving, they were told that it was me and they couldn't believe it. They just kept saying, you know, uh, such me, right. such me ye hai. Par ye kaise? They just couldn't get over it. Right. So I think we, it started with a bang, our first day of started shoot. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Started on a very encouraging note, I'd right. say, because. So let's do, let, let's do this. Let's show the viewers all the different avatars of Vidya and then let's ask her which ones are her favorite and what, how did she enjoy doing all this. Cool. So Vidya, tell us. Of our, out of all these different avatars, what was the m most fun? I think I enjoyed the male disguises the male immensely. Disguises. I've done five of them, four of them are here. There's a Pune, there's a Malvi, there's a Chudiwala and there's a beggar. In addition... What, what is this one is? Oh. Uh, this is a Chudiwala. Churi okay, okay. seller. Okay, okay. Um, you know, it, Charminar is known for its churis. churis. okay. So, you have a lot of churi stalls and he is one of those churi mm -hmm. stall uh, owners, uh, and then there was another one where I've done a Jyotish. Jyotish. I enjoyed all of them because I never <laughs> imagined that I'd actually play man, yeah. and I've worn wigs and mustaches and beards, right. and it was great fun, yeah. So right. I think, but I'd say that the Malvi bit was a bit tricky okay. because I had something put in my nose so that my nose would look wider, so that I wouldn't be, you know, mm -hmm. recognizable. And I had to run a lot in that disguise. Okay. And I had to even do stunts. So I, I would feel like that's going to go into my nose, you know, <laughs> into my uh, windpipe it, yeah. or something like that. So I was very awkward and right. uncomfortable initially. So that that's the only, I think, challenging bit. Otherwise, I've had a blast. I've, right, I've enjoyed right. each one of the disguises. With in a career of a film star, uh, how many times do you get a role like that where, you, where it's a title role and, you know, you get to do so much? Um, I'd like to believe that, uh, um, you know, th the opportunities are definitely opening up. Right. So one can hope for more. Uh, but yes, I know what you mean. Those are rare instances. But I'd say in the past um, five to seven you years. You've been lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have been lucky and I've been greedy and that's worked in my favor. Right. <laughs> the greed gives me the courage to just go ahead and do whatever I please. Right. And I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying this. Okay. Um, Dia Mirza is one of the producers of this. Does it help when your producer is, is also pretty? an actor? It's pretty <laughs> and an actor. <laughs> uh, I definitely think that because she's an actor, right. she's also more sensitive to the needs of actors. Right. Like before the film, Dia and Sahil organized a workshop where uh, Sanyukta Chavla, the writer, and Samar Sheikh, the director, could spend about six days, a few hours every day, with the entire cast. So we got familiar with each other, with the script, with our roles, with Bobby and her world and all of it. So we were fully prepared, prepared and we on. were one b strong team even before we went on shoot. Right. So I think that comes from being an actor, from understanding what makes actors comfortable and all of that. Right. And of course we have Reliance on board. Yes. Um, they came in after the shoot was complete. But you know it's very rare that it happens that when a studio comes on board after when they acquire a film after the film is complete that they're still on the same page creatively right but here with reliance it's been a great creative collaboration sure and uh, we're really all putting our best feet forward right <laughs> right with for all the people who just 
who don't know this industry well but just read the glossies and the tabloids. Explain to them when a producer like Dia and yourself work, the perception is pe actresses don't get along. Oh, that's rubbish. <laughs> that's something that uh, helps sell tabloids. Yeah. Um, I've gotten along with everyone I've worked with, thankfully. I think it just depends on how secure you are and thankfully Dia and me are secure people. Right. Uh, I was amazed when she came to me with Bobby Jasus because I was like, it requires a large heart for an actor to offer, mm -hmm. you know, another actor a role and a role like this, which is just fabulous. But um, she, she just told me, she said, we're either making the film with you or we're not making it. That was very encouraging. And uh, I mean, I'm just, I've had a great time shooting with them. I can't believe this is only Dia and Sahil's second film as right, producers, producers because um, they were, um, you know, I, I think they were extremely, they seemed extremely prepared. experienced, okay. uh, prepared and um, I'd say they're more creative producers. They've been very, very creatively involved. They've supported Samar in every possible way. Right. And Dia is from Hyderabad, so you know, even with okay. the actors and all, she would help with the diction. So uh, I think it's just they took care of everyone on set, okay. and uh, that's very, very rare, especially when it's like I told you, Reliance came on board later. So when it's your own money at stake, it's very difficult it's very to difficult. be <laughs> caring about other people. But I think they've been wonderful. So good, on that note, we'll take a break, but you're, what you're making clear before the break is that two actresses can be friends. A most, most definitely. <laughs> Vidya, when a, when a star at your level, each time you walk in and out of a film, it makes headlines. <laughs> so let's get the record straight. What films are you doing after Bobby Jasus? Uh, the only film I'm doing after Bobby Jasus is Hamari Adhuri Kahani. Um, I haven't greenlit any other projects right, right. yet. I'm looking at scripts, I'm meeting directors, but I've yet to decide what to do after that. Right, so you, you were never gonna, you'd never consider, I remember asking you this last time too, you'd never consider doing Kahani 2, was it being done at all? Or? No, Kahani 2 was, uh, you know, I don't think there were any plans to make Kahani 2. Because Media had started making it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think everyone loves Kahani yeah, so yeah. much that people wanted to see right. Kahani too. But fortunately or unfortunately, there were no plans to ever make Kahani okay. too. You know, you've been in the news for not just your films, but gossip. What is that like? I'm very used to it. Oh, you're very used to it. <laughs> uh, you know, I've been in films for nine years now. And I'm don't not see on the news. any social media platforms. Okay. Not on Facebook, not on Twitter. You know, um, nothing at all, not even on WhatsApp or... Why would that be? I'm very... Uh, Private. Yeah, I, th I, d I don't have anything to say outside of my films. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, Vidya, the perception is that, that, you know, actors like yourself must be getting a lot of film offers. What are offers like? How do they come? How often do they come? Uh, you know, um, thankfully, I think um, there are lots of offers sure. but offers that one considers are not that Unless many film doesn't do well i asked the for example i asked the same question to akshay i said if a film doesn't do well how long do you take to move on he said see by friday evening i know it's not done well saturday sunday i'll sulk and by monday i'm off to another <laughs> film that's how it that's how is it for you um you know very very honestly uh, five of my films worked beautifully sure. uh, critically commercially and in every other way so, I, um, I didn't know how to deal with it when Ghanchakan and Chadi ke side effects didn't do as well as they were expected to. Uh, it did take me a little longer than that, but I think maybe um, at the cost of those films, I will say this, that on a personal level, maybe I just needed to learn to let go. Sure. Um, and I, I think I needed um, a refreshment course in that, which I got with these two films. And <laughs> yes, now I think I, initially, I didn't even want to like, you know, accept it. I was heartbroken that they didn't work. Right. But then later, you distance yourself from it and you say that every film has its, has own, its destiny. own destiny. So it, it's not really <coughs> um, a judgment of how much you or any of the team members work. Some films don't work sometimes, and it's unfortunate. That's all. Right. So, so do you do you sit back and think about what was signed, some change in decisions or something like that? No, not really, because my. Um, my decision to do a film is very, very individual. Okay, it's your it's personal. It's based on the script. Okay. So it, it's not like um, 
I've had a strategy and said, okay, now these kind of films are not working, yeah. so I should do. It's I'm just, like it's pure instinct. Okay, so next will be Hamari Adhuri Khani. Yes. Any reason you just signed one film? That means we'll be interviewing you only once, anytime <laughs> soon. <laughs> yeah, um, I think Hamari Adhuri Khani is slated to release next June. Right. So that's how long it will be before we do another interview, I guess. No, uh, only because, you know, um, the script is being written by Bhat Saab and I got very excited by the idea. I've always wanted to work with him sure. as a director. Uh, but this is the closest I get to work with him and I, I really like Mohit's work. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that film but there are other scripts I'm considering. Nothing that I can commit to here um, yet but um, yeah I will decide on what to do after Hamari Adhuri Kahani soon. Sure, you know I have one last question which is related to Preeti Zinta, one of your colleagues. You know, a lot has been said and written about it, but the media perception is she's not getting enough support from Bollywood places. No, I, I think, you know, what can one really do in situation support like of a situation like this? It's a very delicate situation. It's between two people. Uh, it's really a personal matter. And uh, I think people are respecting the fact that it is a personal private matter and therefore they're not making loose comments about it. Right. Um, you know that I think that should be That's respected and sure. uh, I think it's very unfair when people begin to say to that why aren't you voicing your support just it's like saying you know I don't think armchair activism ever adds up Make, or leads to anything. anything similarly in cases like this I'm sure her closest people are standing by her right. and I'm sure if she reached out to someone from the industry they would but people obviously, obviously. you know uh, want to keep um, keep that respect, respect intact. Okay, I will certainly hope you sign your next film very soon so Thank that we you. keep coming back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Vidya. Best of luck. Thanks, Rohit.